One of the most important features of Google's new agent development kit is the ability to call tools. This is something that a lot of different frameworks have, and it's basically what makes your application, your generative AI application, something more than just a simple LLM to interact with. So in this video, I wanna take a look at how to interact or how to use function tools inside of an agent that you create with Agent Development Kit. So if we look over here in the documentation, we can see that there are different kinds of tools that you can actually use. We have function tools, that's what we'll be focusing on in this video, then built-in tools, third-party tools, Google Cloud tools, MCP tools, which I'm very excited about, open API tools, and then there's a section on authentication. We'll get into those in future videos, but I wanted to take a look at function tools specifically because I think it's something that you can start working with really quickly and maybe, not maybe, actually very much so, start to make interesting things that you'll be able to have a lot of fun with. So let's go over to our ADK uh, playground here. I don't know if they actually call it that, but that's what I'm gonna call it. And we'll also take a look at my code here. What I have here is a very basic agent. There's really nothing going on here beyond just specifying the name of the agent, which is called stock agent. It's gonna be called root agent actually, so that's my fault. And then we're going to have uh, the description and some instructions. Uh, so we don't have any tools that are being passed in right now. We're going to change that in a second here. But you can see that we really start with basically nothing. And so what I'm going to do is I have this uh, get stock price tool being imported here. And I'm going to toss that in there to the tools array. You can have as many as you want, but the more that you do put into a single agent, the harder it will be for the LLM to differentiate between them and ultimately decide which tool should be used when. But something you can kind of do to combat that is inside of the instructions, you can put in here uh, information about the tools that the agent has access to and also provide some guidance on when it should use specific tools. Then in the tool itself, which I have here, this is just a simple uh, get stock price tool. You can create um, or you can use doc strings to give some further differentiation between the different tools and provide a little bit more information and context for the LLM to use when deciding on which tool it should actually uh, use in a given execution or a given flow. It's really, really important that you use doc strings and you use them like well. So you want to make sure that these are clear and concise. I have up here this text snippet. And so I can actually, I'll keep that in there, but I'll just comment that out now that I've copied it. And then I'm going to add this to the instructions. Like I mentioned before, we can use the instructions to actually uh, provide some information about the tools that it has access to. And that's what I'm gonna do here. Now let's go ahead and run our ADK um, studio. Let's say, what is the... Let's see what that gives us. There you go. So it called get stock price, that's correct. It only had one tool, but that's still correct. And we can go over here and see everything that it did. So we can see that it correctly understood that the argument should be Apple. Although something that's interesting is that I believe I put this in wrong and it somehow knew to do that, to, to, to fix it and make it Apple or AAPL. I put APPL, I believe. Let's just confirm that. I did, I put APPL. So it knew that I had the wrong thing and it was able to fix it. And then it goes and gets the response and sends this back to the root agent, which ultimately uh, it sent back to us. So apparently it is $196.98 right now. Let's say that we have some kind of a process that is going to take a longer time. Like maybe, for example, we want to have our team review our document. And so what we could do is we could create a tool here that will facilitate that long running process. So maybe uh, we... We have our document, we upload it to the chatbot or to the agent, and then we say, have the team review this document. And the agent knows who's on our team, and it takes that document, and maybe it sends each of them an email saying, hey, can you please review this for Garrett? And they can then, at their leisure, go and review it for me. Finally, then when they are done reviewing it, they can maybe email me back or respond to the agent or something like that, right? Now. 
this would be a long running process because it's not going to happen right away. It's not even, I mean, it's asynchronous, but it's not like we're just calling an API and then expecting a response within some reasonable amount of time. This is, you know, we're working with people here. I believe this is called human in the loop. And so what is essentially happening is that we need people to then go and take some sort of action. And so we don't want to hold up our agent on our end from working on other things for us just because maybe our coworkers are slow or maybe they're in different time zones or maybe you know one person was off today or whatever it may be. We want our agent to be able to continue to work on other tasks. But we also want our agent to be able to receive updates if anything does come through. So what we're gonna do to help us with that is we're going to use a long running tool, which I have called, uh, so I've created this function here, which is called get design reviewed. And the description is that it reaches out to team members that and requests that they review the most recent design. And just to simulate, I have some yields here, so it will yield uh, like progress updates as time goes on. And ultimately it will return that things have been completed. Now that's not the actual tool because we need to use a helper function called, actually this might be a class. Yes, it is a class. We need to use a class called a long running function tool. And we'll pass in the function that we want it to use. So then we end up with our design review tool. Ultimately that's what creates our tool. So we're gonna pass that in here the next thing that we need to do is, in our case, we need to go and get the description that we can add to the instruction that I created. Now, I want you to watch what happens very carefully here because it probably isn't going to be what you expect, at least not today as of recording on April 18th, 2025. So check this out. I'm gonna say here is a design I just, finished. Please have everyone on my team review and get back to me. Okay, ready? Error. It kind of worked. Sort of. At least like it used the right tool. So that's good. But ultimately, it did not totally work. We did get an error. Cannot pickle generator object. There is a GitHub issue for ADK here covering this error. And you can see that I also chimed in there a little bit too. Um, unfortunately, that doesn't work at the moment. But according to the documentation, this is how you would actually go ahead and create a long running process to be used as a tool. So while it doesn't work today, you should be able to use this hopefully um, in the near future when this does eventually get fixed. If you subscribe to my channel, I will make another video when this actually does come through, letting you know if there's any changes or if you can just use it the way that I've created it here for demonstration purposes. So make sure if you're liking the video that you subscribe and uh, you know, put your notifications on so you get my other videos. Also, if you're enjoying this video, check out the Reddit community that I created. There is a link in the description where we're talking about all kinds of stuff related to AI and agents. So check that out. Looking forward to seeing you over there. Let's now talk about the final type of tool, which is using another agent as a tool. So this is, I think, possibly the most interesting one. So let's see uh, how this works. Well, the most interesting one until maybe MCP works because that doesn't work as of right now. But either way, uh, let's take a look at that. Okay, so I created an agent here, which is going to be my summary agent. The job of this agent is to summarize whatever text gets passed into it. And basically, not only do I want it to summarize the text, but I've given it the instructions of how I want it to do so. So for me, I want it to provide the main themes I want it to have right under those main themes any supporting or relevant information directly below that theme. And then if possible, I also want it to provide some follow-up questions that I as an individual might wanna ask 
uh, of the content in order for me to explore it more or understand it better. So we've come over here. Oh, also, we can't just do that. We need to now say agent tool. Close that off. So it's not enough to just pass in an agent. It needs to be agent tool. And then we pass in the agent to the agent tool. Now what we could do is we can go and grab some very lengthy piece of text and we can send it in there. And we've also given the instructions to our root agent to actually go and um, hand off the responsibility to this other tool if the user asks for a summarization. So let's go and get some really large uh, text and we'll send that in. The text that I found is from Wikipedia. Um, I think that manta rays are really cool. I think they're really awesome. So I wanna learn more about them, but I don't wanna read the entire Wikipedia article. So I'm gonna go and copy that, which I've already done. And then I'm gonna go and paste this in and say, can you summarize this text? Okay, so like what, what happened here? If you recall in our agent tool, we said that we wanted the main themes followed by supporting information, followed by potentially some questions that we could maybe ask additionally to help us understand the content more or maybe learn more about it. What we did is we have this agent. Uh, let me just draw this over here. We have an agent and I will make it like so, right? And we have uh, our root agent, right? We have our root agent and we have a tool. I'll make that kind of like a diamond. And this is a tool, a, an agent tool, as a matter of fact. And so what happens here is that this calls this, right? Then what happens is, whoops, is this does what it's going to do and it sends back the information. It sends back the information. Let me zoom in here a little bit, make that a little bit better. It sends back the result of what it did. So it summarized whatever it was, it sends it back. And then ultimately the root agent and I'll put like, I'll put me over here, right? I'm the user. Then this sends back the, it, it summarizes what the agent wrote for us and then that's what it sent back we can see that here because if we come over here and we not there if we go to this we go to our requests i sent all of this stuff about manta rays right it was kind of a lot actually wasn't all that much it was maybe it cut off a little bit but whatever so i sent that in about manta rays okay now it sent back here's a summary of the text and it gives me an overview right? Manta rays are the largest, are a large filter feeding rays in warm waters, right? Then it gives me another, another uh, conversation here. So overview, conversation, and then interaction, human, oh, interaction with humans. And then it says, here are some follow-up questions you might want to ask. And it gives me the follow-up questions that I asked for in the agent tools instructions. So that works. So like why, right? What happens next is that this is the summary that we actually got, which we can see here. This is what it gave us. So it didn't give us the exact output that we got from the summary agent. Now, how can we change that? We can. We can come over here and we have another, uh, another parameter that we can provide to agent tool called skip summary. What skip summary does, and it's it's a boolean, it's a bool, and it's set to to uh, to false by default. But we can pass in true, and then what'll happen is we can do this entire thing again, right? We can do this entire thing again, and it should skip that that extra summarization and just provide us with the actual output that we wanted, which is what we saw that we kind of expected. But let's give this the exact same thing again, and see what happens. We got an error. Why is that? Well, that's because it's a bug in ADK. That's why. And there is another GitHub uh, issue here. And I gave earlier today, like 54 minutes ago, almost an hour ago, 
they were asking for a minimal example. So I gave the example that I think, at least what we're seeing here, provides uh, a working or a not working reproducible code. Um, so that's what happened there. However, once again, according to the docs, this should work. So when this does get resolved, again, I will put out another video demonstrating it working or talking about any changes to the code that you need to make because again, this is you know the API here subject to change. While two of those things didn't work, they will hopefully very soon, and the first one will work. So you can get started with tools inside of the agents that you create using the agent development kit. So having said that, if you've enjoyed this video, definitely subscribe, rate, comment. Let me know what you want to learn next about agents and AI and stuff like that. And I'm happy to try and look into it and make a video on it because I've been really enjoying this stuff. Um, if you want to join our Reddit community, check out the link in the description and also uh, kulamai.com. That's going to be the new SaaS product that I've been working on for agents, which is going to be like an agent builder um, that you can just drag and drop stuff and create an agent that you can then deploy and use in your own project. So that's coming to you as well. So thanks for watching and I'll see you in the next one. Take care. See ya.